Hello everyone and welcome to another video. My name is Lance and today we're taking another look at some unseen and cut content from Bloodborne. For today's video, once again we find ourselves in the alpha version of Yosefka's clinic, but this time we're just passing through. I did want to show you, however, that I finally got this main hall to load correctly, whereas previously a lot of the clutter and objects in this area were invisible and half the room wouldn't load properly. I've now got it all working the way it's supposed to. This also means we can fight this monster without being interrupted by the whole area unloading suddenly. I also noticed this monster has an attack that knocks you down on the floor. I don't recall them being able to do that in the final game. The only real noteworthy thing here is just that this far wall has a completely different, older looking brickwork texture on it compared to the version in the final game. But let's move on outside towards central Yarnum and take a look at what different things we might find. Immediately we encounter something very unexpected. In the courtyard outside the clinic, there is a garden of eyes patrolling around, which I chose to avoid because it's extremely high level and can kill me in one hit. Also here in the courtyard are some moon lava that seem to move a lot faster than the ones in the final game. Based on the fact that one of them is stuck partially in this gate, I expect you're not meant to encounter these here until much later in the game, when you come through the back entrance via the Forbidden Woods. So moving on to Central Yarnum proper, we'll get to see something quite special. Now you all know how much I love warp chairs, and you've followed along as we found remnants of them, and made some pretty well educated guesses as to what function they played. Well here, finally, after far more work than you can probably imagine, I've managed to reactivate and completely restore a fully functional warp chair. The prompt here says, shake the phantom awake. We're going to leave him to sleep for the time being, but don't worry, we'll, we'll come back later. Let's head to the left and glitch our way through this gate. Once we're on the other side, we can just open it using the lever as usual. And then continue down towards this residence. Things mostly look the same in here, and we could continue upstairs to get to the Great Bridge and fight the Cleric Beast, but instead we're going to try to get to the other side of this residence.
In this version of the alpha, a small gate has been placed here, but we can just once again glitch through it to access the back streets. I love this little briefcase that seems to be having a really hard time rendering correctly. There's a sleeping brick troll here, which is behaviour we never see in the final game. But let's head back towards that residence from this direction. We can open this shortcut door, but still can't get through. We're really not meant to be able to get here, no matter what. And it might be because there's someone here we're not meant to be able to meet. Not from round here, are you? And outside on the nightly hunt? But you must be sick, mate. Black death upon you. I hope they have your head before morning. Now be gone. Get away from me right now. Go. Mate, not you again. <laughs> We're not like you. Don't you understand that? We're still normal, you see. But, well, I'll tell you what, though. You want to insist on asking me questions? Bring us blood. That's right, blood. Then I'll tell you what I know. It hardly pays to be choosy these days. As it's written in the good book, mate, no blood is bad blood. <laughs> so he wants us to bring him blood, although it's not entirely clear what we're supposed to bring him. Ah, oh, you. Did you bring us blood? <sighs> the minds of the infected are frail. You can't be blamed. Off with you now. Please, go away. You're not normal. Not normal, no matter how hard you try to pretend, you're not normal. So we clearly don't have oh, what he wants. Did you bring us blood? And if we say no, he says the, <sighs> the same thing. The minds infected are frail. You can't be blamed. Off with you now. Please, go away. You're not normal. Not normal, no matter how... Well, it took me quite a while to figure out, but what he actually wants is 300 blood echoes. So we can go kill a few beasts, and once we have 300, he will actually take them from us and offer us more in the way of conversation. It's interesting that you actually lose 300 blood echoes by doing this. Ah, oh, you. Did you bring us blood? Oh, well, well, very good. Yeah, nice one, mate. Yeah, very good. So, what do you want to know? We can ask about the blood of a sage, or about Lawrence. The blood of a sage? Oh, I don't know nothing, Mub. Not a thing. It's some made-up nonsense, sir. You know what? Wait a minute, wait a minute. The minister at the cathedral might know something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Father Norbert's his name. Quite an eyebrow, you see, but... Well, the only trouble is... <laughs> On the nights of the hunt, the western quarter is boarded up, blocking passage to the cathedral in the eastern quarter. And once the hunt is done, well, well, you'll be dead along with all the other sickos, you see. <laughs> I can't breathe. I can't breathe. The blood of a sage again. <sighs> the minds of the infected are frail. Perhaps you deserve mercy. I know nothing. But Father Norbert, head of the cathedral in the Eastern Quarter, might know something. Pay him a visit, if you dare. <laughs> Be gone. <sighs> I know pay him a... <laughs> and about Lawrence? Lawrence. Ah, yes, Lawrence. Another outsider like yourself. Yeah, I know him. He left for the cathedral in the Eastern Quarter. On my advice, even. And lucky for him. <laughs> you see, just after he left, the bell tolled, kicking off the hunt. And no off-comer ever lived through the hunt, trust me, mate. <laughs> About Lawrence one more time. Oh, my God. The minds of the infected are frail. Perhaps you deserve mercy. That outsider, Lawrence, yeah. 
He set off for the cathedral in the Eastern Quarter. On my advice. Although I don't expect he ever made it. <laughs> oh, that. Hold on. <laughs> Give your blessing and wash from us the blood of beasts. Umbasa. Ah, you. Give your blessing and what Umbas. So you might be wondering if there's something behind this wall to explain why he's placed here and well I can tell you there's absolutely nothing at all. We can expect he was meant to be placed at a window but just ended up being placed here in early development for testing before being cut from the game entirely. I really love how this amygdala is looking across all of central Yarnum. You can see it from pretty much anywhere on this side of the Great Bridge. I wish they had have just left this one in the game, maybe just hiding it until you had enough insight like the few other you encounter later on in the game. Either way, let's not explore too far for now. We'll head back to the warp chair and finally get a chance to use one for real. So as I said, the prompt basically reads, shake the phantom awake, and this is a function that was eventually replaced with light the lamp in the final game. It activates the warp chair. So shaking the phantom causes him to fade away, and the familiar messengers appear at the foot of the chair, all facing the chair waiting for us to sit in it. The prompt here says sit in the chair, or a more literal translation would be sit in the sofa or sleeping chair. It's such a strange analogue with what we eventually find of Mikolash, as he sleeps in his chair dreaming in the Nightmare of Mensis. Sitting in the chair takes us to the Hunter's Dream. There's no warp menu or anything, it behaves exactly as the lanterns do in the final game. So, Central Yarnum is a big place, and there's still so much in the alpha version we haven't explored yet, but for now, I think we'll leave it here. I'd like to thank you for watching, as I always say I have a lot more to show you from Bloodborne, be it from the Alpha or otherwise, so please do subscribe if you want to follow along. And do hit the like button or leave a friendly comment if you enjoyed this video, and let me know if you have suggestions for any mysteries you'd like me to look into. If you'd like a behind the scenes look at how I create these videos, be sure to follow me on Twitter at ManFightDragon, and either way, I'll see you next time.